you ever tackled a problem where the solution seems so close and yet just out of reach? Maybe you write code and you just can't quite get that program to work. For me, that problem was my life. There were certain things in life that I found so challenging compared to other people. Networking events triggered crippling social anxiety. I often misunderstood my managers. And then, in 2019, I discovered that I'm autistic. This was the answer, the common thread that I was looking for, the trend line that explains the data about me. After this revelation, I returned to my old job at the tax office as a data scientist, and I co-founded their neurodiversity network, which grew to 400 members in one year. I shared with the network that organizations that become employers of choice for neurodivergent staff will have a profound competitive advantage. To unpack this idea some more, let's rewind to 2017, before my revelation. I'd just moved here to Canberra for a secondment, and four months later, I ended up bawling my eyes out in a senior executive's office. I was terribly homesick, and the job was highly ambiguous. Not what I expected at all. I couldn't even use noise-canceling headphones due to the reactive nature of the work to help me focus in the open plan office. In short, I couldn't use my skills in this role. So I finished the secondment early and returned home devastated. You see, I knew that I had valuable skills to offer employers. I use a Linux operating system at home, and I write code to automate aspects of my life and visualize how I spend my time. I can focus on tasks for an extended period of time, even if it means I forget to eat. And I think about life in terms of systems and frameworks and patterns. As you can probably imagine, these skills help me to shine as a data scientist. But when it comes to neurodivergent labels, it's so easy to focus on their stereotypical challenges. Autism, socially awkward, ADHD, easily distracted, dyslexia, reads back to front. And it doesn't help that these labels often have the word disorder in their official medical name. Autism spectrum disorder. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Because after all, neurodivergent people also have profound strengths. Many people with ADHD or dyslexia are highly creative. Imagine for me plotting someone's strengths and challenges on a graph. For neurodivergent people, our graphs would look a lot spikier compared to the graphs for neurotypical people. Both our strengths and our challenges are often more pronounced. But it's important to bear in mind that if you've met one neurodivergent person, then you've met one neurodivergent person. Everyone is unique. Yes, there are common neurodivergent traits, but everyone is unique. Not everyone with autism likes maths or IT like I do. I hate working from home. Many autistic people love that. As a data scientist, 
I love using numbers to tell stories, and I think they paint a really important picture here. We know that approximately one in six people are neurodivergent. And yet neurodivergent people are much more likely to be unemployed. One in three autistic adults are unemployed. That's compared to one in 10 for people with a disability. So on one hand, neurodivergent people have profound strengths. On the other hand, we're much more likely to be unemployed. This is a massive opportunity. We are a massive pool of untapped talent. And so organizations that can harness this talent will have a massive competitive advantage. So the question remains, how can organizations harness this talent? Ultimately, we need to change our paradigm. It's like the Linux operating system that I mentioned earlier. It's less common than Windows or Mac, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just has different strengths, challenges, and use cases. In the same way, we shouldn't try to fix neurodivergent people, make them neurotypical. Instead, we need to fix disabling working environments and give neurodivergent people the opportunity to harness their strengths and thrive. We need to, we need to make recruitment processes inclusive to attract neurodivergent talent. And we need to retain neurodivergent talent by cultivating workplace cultures that celebrate diverse thinking. After all, a neurodiverse team is going to perform so much better than an echo chamber. Neurodiversity, which includes both neurotypicality and neurodivergence, isn't just normal, it's vital. After finding out that I'm autistic, after this revelation, I returned to the tax office and I started meeting regularly with other autistic employees. It was so good to meet other people who actually understood me for the first time. The ATO were amazing as well. They supported me as I co-founded the Neurodiversity Network, and they were so keen to understand how they could be more inclusive of neurodivergent staff. Finding out that I'm autistic also transformed my relationship with my manager by giving him a really powerful insight into both my strengths and my areas of development. Earlier this year, I moved here to Canberra again, this time to work with the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And they've been incredible as well. They've supported me as I've met up with neurodiversity advocates across the public sector. And they helped me to organize a cross-agency meeting about neurodiversity inclusion. I was thrilled. 165 staff from over 30 different agencies attended this meeting, including some amazing senior executives. I shared at this meeting some ideas about how we could get better at both recruiting and retaining neurodivergent staff. For example, what would it look like to actually recruit the best talent, to actually test a candidate's aptitude for the job, to stop overvaluing the ability to write job applications in a very specific way, and to answer interview questions in a very specific way on the fly? What would it look like to give candidates the interview questions beforehand or to scrap interviews entirely? And what would it look like to retain the best talent, to really get to know your staff, to ask them about their strengths and challenges, to ask them about their preferred working and communication styles, 
to ask them whether they prefer working in a noisy open plan office or whether they like putting on noise cancelling headphones and doing focused work. And the great thing is that these changes wouldn't just benefit neurodivergent staff, they'd benefit everyone. All organisations want to recruit the best talent. And all staff will thrive if they can harness their strengths at work. Finding out that I'm autistic, this revelation, it transformed my life and my career. I finally had a framework for harnessing my strengths and identifying strategies to address my challenges. I know what jobs I'll be a gun at and what jobs I'll find really, really stretching. And I wear novelty suits to networking events as an icebreaker to help with my social anxiety. I've been able to apply these strategies since moving here to Canberra again this year. And this time, I'm so proud to call Canberra my home. I've been sharing this content across the public sector. How will you advocate for neurodiversity inclusion and help your organisation have a competitive advantage? <laughs>